This paper uh, is one that has a long history in neuroscience, dating back to 1980 with the discovery of a protein called ELA-B in flies from a behavioral assay uh, that was recognized over the subsequent decade uh, by the JAN Laboratory and uh, by Kalpana White to be not only uh, a protein that's a neuron-specific marker in flies, but to be an RNA binding protein. Uh, with some role in, in alternative splicing, suggesting, uh, consistent with other work in the field, that perhaps neurons have their own system for regulating RNA metabolism that other cells in the body don't use. Hi, my name is Gulay Shinjadan, and I was the postdoctoral researcher in the Darnell lab who conducted the research that I'm about to talk to you today, along with my colleagues. What you see here are two toys, an airplane and a car, that my son built using basic building blocks. Interestingly, we have known for many years that nature is, a, is able to do the same thing in a process called alternative splicing. Exons are spliced together in different combinations to generate transcripts and proteins with different properties. What we don't know exactly is how this process is regulated. Over the years, the Darnell Lab and others have identified RNA binding proteins that bind to RNA targets in a sequence and position-dependent manner and regulate its alternative splicing. Moreover, specific tissue types, cell types, can tailor their transcriptomes and proteomes, not just by expressing specific transcription factors, but also by expressing these specific RNA binding proteins in a tissue-dependent manner. In this study, we investigate the role of a group of RNA binding proteins called ELAV-like that are exclusively expressed in neurons. ELAV stands for embryonic lethal and abnormal vision after Drosophila studies where the protein was originally identified. These results suggested that in Drosophila, ELAV regulates the alternative splicing of a number of target pre-mRNAs. ELAV has three mammalian paralogs expressed in neurons, and whether or not they regulate alternative splicing in the brain, and if so, the extent to which they do and their targets were completely unknown until now. In order to determine the potential role of neuronal ELAV-like proteins in neuronal alternative splicing, initially we took a non-biased, genome-wide approach to identify the RNA targets of these proteins. For this purpose, we used the HITS-CLIP methodology a technique in which in vivo RNA targets are UV cross-linked in brain tissue to proteins to which they directly interact with, and after specific immunoprecipitation of desired protein RNA complexes, sequenced used high-throughput sequencing technologies. Using this technique, we identified that neuronal ELAV-like proteins bind to introns and 3' UTRs of pre-mRNAs and mature mRNAs. This result suggested to us that perhaps neuronal ELAV-like proteins are able to regulate alternative splicing of pre-mRNA targets by binding to associated intronic regions. For this purpose, we used microarrays and ELAV-like knockout tissue to identify those pre-mRNA targets whose alternative splicing was dependent on ELAV-like in a genome-wide fashion. Interestingly, when we systematically looked at neuronal ELAV-like binding sites on these transcripts, we saw that many of these misregulated alternative exons had binding sites around their vicinity. What you see in this figure are peaks that represent cumulative ELAV-like binding sites on a composite pre-mRNA target. The red exon represents the alternative, and the flanking gray exon represents the constitutive exons. Preferential ELAV-like binding to 5' splice site located in the downstream intron was associated with alternative exon inclusion, and preferential ELAV-like binding to 3' splice site located in the upstream intron was associated with alternative exon skipping. These results were quite exciting for us since they suggested that in vivo, neuronal ELAV-like proteins are direct regulators of brain-specific alternative splicing. However, by far the vast majority of neuronal ELAV-like binding sites were on 3' UTRs. This suggested to us that perhaps ELAV-like regulates post-transcriptional processes other than alternative splicing. Consistently, we identified transcripts whose steady state levels were misregulated in ELAV-like knockout tissue. Having determined that ELAV-like is in a position to regulate both alternative splicing and the steady state levels of its target mRNAs, we were next interested in identifying the physiological role of the individual targets of these proteins. 
one of our top targets that came up in both of our analyses was a gene named glutaminase. Glutaminase encodes a protein that synthesizes the major excitatory neurotransmitter glutamate in the brain. We found that glutaminase mRNA and protein levels were decreased in knockout mice, and as you can see in this figure, total glutamate levels were significantly disrupted in LAV-like knockout mice. We were very intrigued by the fact that elav like double knockout mice had almost a 50% reduction in total brain glutamate levels, and immediately wanted to see whether this massive disruption had consequences on the electrophysiology of neuronal excitability in these mice. Our collaborators, Jeff Nobles and his colleagues, carried out EEG recordings on alavi like knockout mice and determined that indeed these mice displayed abnormal electrical discharges and seizures. In short, we believe that by binding to and regulating a set of RNA targets, neuronal alavi like proteins are in a position to regulate essential physiological processes in the brain. In this study, we have focused on a single target glutaminase and neuronal excitability. By investigating other targets of neuronal ALAVI-like, our dataset offers the exciting possibility of identifying new physiological processes that are regulated by these RNA binding proteins. So the current work in, includes uh, many facets. One is it required the generation of ALAVI null mice, uh, work contributed by uh, Kirk Jensen, who spearheaded that, along with Unyang Park and Ching Wen Yang includes a quite a bit of traditional biochemistry, uh, work from James O'Connor uh, and Galatia herself. And finally, the application of new techniques that our laboratory has developed called HITSCLIP, uh, which provide a way to directly cross-link RNA protein complexes in living tissues, such as uh, the nervous system. Galatia relates it. It closes a long chapter in neuroscience that goes back over 30 years with the identification of the first good neuronal specific marker, which turned out to be the first neuronal specific RNA binding protein. And we have finally come to the point of beginning to understand what it does in mammalian neurons.